Beauty. Thy name is MCRN Unidentified Light Cruiser Class. Being a part of the more recent fleet modernization program, this light cruiser class possesses state-of-the-art systems indicative of Mars's technological sophistication. Despite only being seen in the last two seasons of the show, we've seen the light cruiser in enough scenes to firmly grasp its technological and combat capability. Let's get right into the breakdown. While being primarily rolled out of the Martian shipyards between 2359 and 2361, the light cruisers were being commissioned at a time when Earth and Mars were at peace and the new power of the Free Navy was rising in the outer planets. Ships of this class were most likely intended to function within a much larger battle group as valuable combat support ships. We can draw this conclusion from the fact that despite it being nearly double the length of the Corvette class, it still lacks any sort of railgun. However, this is somewhat obvious because at the time, the smallest Martian ship to have a railgun equipped were the much larger Sirocco class assault cruisers. Starting off with the basics, this light cruiser class has four Epstein drives at the back of the ship to quickly accelerate in interplanetary transits and when on approach to combat zones. As mentioned before, the length of this ship class is double that of the Corvette and stands at 89 meters, making it much larger than the Morgan class patrol destroyers yet surprisingly smaller than the D-Class fleet support ships. Armament-wise, the light cruiser is impressively well-armed for its size. The class has 9 of the Martian standard Nariman Dynamics 40mm point defense cannons spread across its hull. These PTCs provide a full 360 degrees firing arc and can effortlessly knock down any incoming torpedoes. They are also extremely effective in CQB, as the Teflon-coated tungsten rounds can rip through the hull of most ships in the solar system turning any enemy ships into a derelict Swiss cheese of a ship. Additionally, the light cruiser has 10 forward-facing torpedo tubes linked to numerous shared magazines. The number of magazines is somewhat unclear, however, we know there are at least 4 with 40 torpedoes each, being a total of 160 torpedoes. These torps were highly configurable for a number of tasks and had swappable warheads ranging from hull melting plasma warheads to tactical nuclear warheads. This loadout makes it an ideal ship class to act as a point defense ship for a much larger fleet and at the same time bolstered the fleet's torpedo capacity and firing rate. Following up, this is the CIC of the light cruiser. Being somewhat of a hallmark of most Martian vessels, the CIC is split into two tiers. The bottom floor primarily focused on reactor, communications, and weapons control, and the top floor focused on navigation and other critical ship systems. However, besides navigation, these stations are not as important as they may seem, as all of these displays can be repurposed to show a different system on the ship. However, the only place where this rule doesn't apply is the navigation section, which is slightly different from the rest of the CIC. Similar to that of the navigation section we see on the Rosinante, there are two seats with one of them being higher than the other. With the FN Pella being one of the most explored MCRN vessels second only to the hero ship Rosinante, we have gone in many scenes that take place across a wide variety of rooms of this ship class. First, we have the situation room used by the highest ranking officer on board. This room is pretty well thought out. In the corner, there's a stand for a vac suit or any kind of armor. There's also a crash couch for hygiene maneuvers, as well as medical gear next to it. In the center of the room is a desk with a large display showing all the systems on board the ship. And finally, this additional console is similar to that of the one in the CIC. Next, we have the galley of the ship class. This looks pretty much like the Rosinante galley, just scaled up, and has more tables and equipment. Provisions were heated up in the microwaves, and most importantly, there was a coffee machine. And as we all know, good coffee is critical to the proper function of any crew. Finally, we have the prisoner holding cells. These cells are very similar to the ones found on the Doniger class battleship. These cells were intended for the use of holding prisoners of war, pirates, and insubordinate officers on board the ship. Each cell also has the capability of muting the sound of its occupant. Now, let's move on to the history of this ship class. The only ship we have ever seen of this class is the infamous FN Pella. Sometime during the events of Season 5, the Pella is given to Marco Inaris' Free Navy in a trade agreement with the Martian Separatists involved in the Laconia movement. Inaros was able to pull this off with the promise of the delivery of the last remaining sample of the protomolecule stolen off of Tycho's station, but also partly because of the fact that the Separatists wanted to give the Soul System a distraction while they moved their forces to Laconia. In Episode 3, we see it for the first time as Naomi is taken against her will and is put on board for a while. 
They also take Naomi's ship, the Chetsamoka, in the process. For a while after this, the Pella goes around the belt and meets up with a few factions, whilst also giving out their invitations to join the Free Navy. Eventually, the fleet meets up with Drummer's faction in Episode 6. After docking, Kamina, Oksana, and Joseph are escorted to the Pella's CIC, where they meet Marco and Aros and discuss the possibility of Drummer's faction joining the Free Navy and combining their strength. In the following episode, Naomi jumps to the Chetsamoka without a vac suit in a desperate attempt to escape the Pella and foil Marco's plan to use the Chetsamoka as a trap for the Rosinante. Believing that Naomi had died from spacing herself, the Pella remains on its course on the float. At the end of Season 5, the Pella and the other free navy ships burn to the Soul Ring. This then leads to the battle at the Ring Gate. With the help of the rogue Martian fleet, the free navy led by the Pella cruises past the debris of three inner ships and transits the Ring. In the Season 6 opener, the Pella can be seen docked at Ceres after the station was rid of the inner inhabitants and had fallen into free navy control. As predicted in Season 5, Ceres would be used by the Free Navy ships as a critical port where they would restock munitions and fuel. In Episode 3, we see the Pella en route to a location, whilst Marco and Rosenfeld were discussing how they were going to get resources to Medina Station. Unexpectedly, they spot the drive plume of a Martian Corvette class, which later turns out to be the Rosinante. What follows is what in my opinion is the best space battle we have ever seen in The Expanse. Despite the Rossi being outnumbered 3 to 1, with sheer luck they defeat the Free Navy group. If you would like to see a detailed breakdown of this, check out the battle breakdown I made for Season 6, Episode 3. In the finale of The Expanse, the Pella plays a crucial role. First tricking both the UNN and Drummer battle groups by having a decoy Pella in the main FN battle group, and by disguising the actual Pella as a belt or freighter. This tactic allows the Pella and the Heavy Frigate to wipe the floor with Drummer's battle group and proceed to the Ring Gate as planned. The Inazami tries to collide with the Pella in a desperate attempt to stop it, but the Heavy Frigate uses itself as a shield and the Pella leaves the scene with only moderate damage to its drives, hull, and CIC. Finally, the Pella meets its match when on approach to the Ring Space. The Rossi's crew detonated the Gian Battista mid-transit and threw every bit of mass and energy at the ring to trigger the entities. Despite giving the order to veer off, it was already too late, and the Pella with what remains of the Free Navy fleet gets destroyed by the ring entities. For the last portion of this video, I'd like to show these concept art I was able to get my hands on. This image depicts that of three Pella designs and also has a Corvette class to show its scale. Concept B of course is the most similar to what they eventually went with but A and C really show off how much the design of the ship was based on the much smaller Morgan-class patrol destroyers. For example, this underslung section of Concept A looks pretty much like the front of a Morgan. Like I always say, I wouldn't have minded if either of these had been the one that made it to the show. Even placing them in some background shots to give the MCR and fleets more variety would have been cool as well. Thank you for watching my ship breakdown on the MCRN Light Cruiser. If you would like to see more videos on The Expanse or other science fiction franchises, please click the subscribe button so you never miss a new upload. I'd also like to give a shout out to Star Phoenix who has been a great support and directly helped me with the creation of this video.